by the time I shot this video is after the premiere but before the embargo has been lifted so if you're watching this the embargo has been lifted for Creed 3 and I'm lucky enough to say that I was invited to the premiere of Creed 3 in Leicester Square London and it was an amazing experience this is the first time I ever went to a film premiere if you can um if you can actually put yourself in that situation and mindset that you've been invited to a premiere, you're going to see all these stars, you're going to be walking on the red carpet and you get to watch a film weeks before everyone else and it was a real experience, I really enjoyed it. The film itself, I think for Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut, it was solid and that is my personal opinion from, from a guy who loves Rocky, who grew up watching Rocky. And I actually recently did a marathon of all six movies, Rocky 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and Rocky Balboa. And then I watched Creed 1 and 2 in preparation for Creed 3. And the thing is, this is a bit different from the previous Creed movies. The first film was directed by um, Ryan uh, Coogler. Second one was directed by Stephen Capel Jr. And third one directed by Michael B. Jordan. So different, uh, uh, different directors, different stylistic choices. And in this one, you can see the passion behind Michael's directing as, um, as someone who is a fan of anime. Um, I saw a few inspirations personally from watching the film into what he was referencing to so there's an anime called Hajime no Ippo and maybe a bit of haiku as well what I mean by that is if you watch the animes you have all of these um, action pieces in which when they're boxing and they're doing their moves you can see the slow-mo in the animes and they're talking to themselves about what they're trying to inflict onto the opponent with this film he did the exact same thing but uh, but in a different with a different approach in which he s slowed the entire um, time and space down and as he's about to let's say um, hit a shot into an opponent everything slows down and you can see his eyes focusing on a certain part of the body a certain part of the anatomy and that's what he's going for and you can feel it that he has inspiration from the fact that you have these animes who are doing the exact same thing but onto film it's harder to do on film it just is um, you don't have uh, the freedom to just draw something and it just magically happened this is something which you have to create and something which you have to envision as well with the fact that uh, the, f the film itself shot on IMAX beautiful glow you can't go wrong with IMAX and it's the first uh, uh, Creed film I think or the first ro yeah first Rocky slash Creed film that's been shot on IMAX uh, none of the other films have been shot on IMAX uh, this film has a, a a range of Ari, Red, Sony and IMAX cameras so four different type of cameras and to just show the glorification of um, you know of the idea of spectacle and we see that in the fight with um, uh, with Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors. Honestly, I think Jonathan Majors killed his role and he was flipping huge. I swear, I never thought you could watch him in Loki season one and pick up the size that he had then to now. I don't know how much pound of muscle he put on, but he is ridiculous. And uh, I think from what I've heard, he thinks he's consuming like 6,100 calories per day, eating six times a day, training three, two to three times a day. And his work rate was just insane. I don't know how a man can actually accomplish that, but from his physique, man is ridiculous. Um, The story as well is, it, it felt a bit empty in a sense that I miss Rocky. And the fact that Sylvester Stallone wasn't in the movie was a bit upsetting. But also at the same time, I think it's very, um, I think it makes sense with the way Creed 2 was left off in which he moved in with his son to visit his son I think that's just his uh, story are completed so it's not like the fact that they killed him off or anything but it's just I guess there's no point of having him in Creed 3 if he's not going to serve any purpose this is Adonis's Creed um, retirement this is him towards the end of his um, fighting career and it's just like how you see in Rocky 5 how he retired uh, uh, how he's completely retired and they want to get him back into the ring same thing happened here I think it's, it's a pretty solid movie uh, great action pieces the sound effects were brilliant i think this is probably the best sound uh sound design film that i've seen in the rocky slash crease franchise that you can hear every single punch that was thrown you can hear the uh, the audience screaming and shouting that's how i truly felt watching in imax and i think watching in imax is probably the best way to go or in dolby for this movie and i i'm glad to have met michael b jordan as well a few days later uh, for a little round table talk and got to uh, we got to uh, ask him some questions about uh, you know uh, directing and what uh, inspiration he had um 
how he coped with um you know coming up with different ideas what his themes of love is um uh how he incorporated a- asl the asl element in this film by the way it's really well done because when i saw creed 2 and i thought to myself how they're gonna implement this into creed 3 he did it in a very natural way i think it's a very good directing choice that he didn't force the idea of asl down people's throats uh he made it a norm and that's what it made it feel a lot natural it flowed very well into the story and uh, th- uh tessa thompson who plays bianca as well she um she has progressive hearing uh, loss as well and um it, it addresses all of that uh also the daughter amara as well it, it, it just was well done and the film i think is clocked in just over two hours and ten minutes um i think it has a really good uh, story it has a lot of long takes so it keeps you engrossed into the story all three creed movies were solid for the you know uh, when they came out creed one was brilliant to show the uprising of adonis's creed creed two was great to show the rise and fall and rise again of adonis's creed and creed three just showed the idea of family and it just worked really well uh, really well i think i like the story of uh, Adon- uh, adonis's creed and damien anderson i think they worked really well um and i'm even though there was no appearance of rocky in this movie i just think that it flowed and he did a pretty good job of not forcing that idea down our throats that all rocky's in this movie so you should feel sad or anything like that it just it just felt like life life just moves on so you just gotta move on with the character and you just gotta you know you just gotta keep moving forward and um yeah i think it's a it's a solid movie if you if by the time you watch this review if you watch this review uh, if you watch it Please check out cinemas. I highly recommend. I think you'll really enjoy it. Hope you liked the video. Hope you liked the review. Let me know what you think. If you watched the film, let me know. If you haven't seen the film, are you looking forward to it? And hopefully I could see you in my next video.